Hello everybody and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick and today we're going to be checking out a pre-alpha version of an upcoming very very polished and amazing looking roguelike game called Vagante by Nuke9 Games. Now the premise behind this one as far as I can tell sort of feels a little bit like a fantasy spelunky with a little bit of a twist of some chasm in there. It's a, maybe a little bit more heavily oriented towards the action RPG direction but my goodness is that some beautiful art, I have to say. This is really, really a stunning presentation for a game that is this early along, uh, at least as far as I can tell. And the, the build, I believe, it says Alpha 4, but then when you start up the game, it actually says this is a pre-alpha version, not indicative of, you know, final qualities or anything like that. So why don't we uh, check this out a little bit? Let's take a look at our options, and then we will jump in for some fun. So first things first, uh, I've got this actually set up to run off controller, so it already has controller support. That's fantastic. We've got some slider from music and sound effects. We've got particles, background smooth lighting, and load from archive. I'm not actually sure what that last one does. I'm going to assume like an auto load save or something like that. And we can set up some controls. Like I said, already got that all pretty much sorted, just clicking uh, use gamepad. So not a whole lot to really worry about on that front. And then we'll just start up a new game. So there's not a lot to choose from in terms of character class, but the two characters are actually differentiated between the male and the female. A uh, male character seems to have a sword with a little bit better reach, and perhaps, well, a different skill set as well. And the, the female seems to have a dagger, and like I said, there's uh, shadow moves, there's some sort of uh, archery-specific stuff, and I think a lot of the differentiation on equipment is going to come from what we actually manage to find in these randomly generated dungeons that we'll be wandering about in. And as you can see, there's a third portrait here that is not filled in yet. So I've tried both of the classes, I've done about maybe 10 runs or so, all of which ended rather unceremoniously and quickly. Uh, so I think we should be in for some good times watching me get crushed by rocks and such. Really, really great attention to details here, too. I don't know if you noticed, but if you look very, very carefully, you'll occasionally catch, like, a little particle uh, catching the light as you look into the entrance of that cave. Just wanted to dwell on that for a moment. So here we go. This is the opening of our first area here. And we've got some sort of like a fog of war scenario going on and also lots to explore on our map that you can see down on the bottom. So let's get acclimated here before we actually start jumping to our death and all of that good stuff. Uh, so we've got some pretty basic controls, at least at the start. We've got a jump, which is on A. We've got an attack on X. And I think that's about all we've got, to be honest, other than opening up our menu, which is the next thing we're going to do, is we actually want to go in and uh, put in our one affinity point, which is sort of like our skill uh, point or skill tree allocation set. So we can pick from sword, holy, or defense. Uh, I've tended to go with sword for all of my runs so far because it just gives you a really useful attack to be able to do a down strike. Uh, additionally, you slide backwards or forwards while stabbing, I guess to give you a little bit extra momentum or something like that. If you want to go with holy, that could also be pretty handy because then you won't take fall damage, which could be a bit of a problem if you make a poor jump. Uh, although there are a lot of one-hit kills that I've noticed in this as well. And then we've got defensive, which is going to allow us to hold down to block attacks. I'm imagining that the 1, 2, and 3 here are asking for that equivalent amount of points, but I'm not 100% sure yet. I haven't actually achieved a level in this game, so we'll see. It might also just be allocating or saying that it's levels 1 and 2 and 3, so that's fine too. Uh, so there's overhead slash and hold your attack button to gather strength, so there's a power-up move. And then on holy divine weapon to shoot lasers, that sounds fantastic. And reincarnate after death at the cost of strength. I'm not actually sure what that means. I guess lower your HP and come back a little weaker. Sort of like a nine lives in Isaac or something like that. Uh, gain a recharging defensive shield, that sounds really useful. And become immune to knockbacks when taking damage. Alright, so all of those are pretty cool. I'm going to again go with the sword attack though, just because having the ability to hit down... Uh, well, you'll see. It'll come in handy a bunch of times. So there's a bunch of traps we have to watch out for. I've noticed, in addition to just these enemies that we'll see wandering about, various bugs and slimes and goblins and such, uh, I've also run into arrow traps. I've run into uh, some sort of Venus flytrap thing that was embedded in the ground. I've run into breaking blocks that'll fall from the ceiling and crush me in one hit. I've run into spikes. I've run into shopkeepers that are pissed off. And uh, like I said, it's got a lot of analogs to be made too spelunky, and I don't say that lightly uh, because I know that it's an overly reductive thing to say. I think this has a, a potential to be something very, very different and cool. 
but we just found a longbow, which is pretty cool, because this is the first time I've actually run into a different weapon. Uh, so far, all of my weapons have just been, well, that sword, and uh, on the lady, I had a dagger, which is, you know, pretty cool too, but I just didn't find that the uh, range on it was useful to me. So I'm not actually sure how we use this thing. Uh, attack, use, equip, range, drop, item. It's probably just going to be allocated on another button, I'm going to guess. Oh, that is correct, and do we have... I don't think we actually have ammo for that, hopefully, so that's cool. Uh, let's just not die in one hit, hopefully, and then maybe be actually uh, able to use that a little bit. And I can't aim up, in case you were wondering. I want to just test that out, since this is the first time I've had this weapon. I really do quite like the sprite art style. It's uh, definitely small, and it's a bit on the cute side. Oh, is that... Okay, I was worried that was a live bomb that was going to kill me. Uh, oh, and I can grab ledges. I forgot to mention that before. So that was an arrow trap. It's gone now. <laughs> and uh, anyway, I was mentioning the art style in general and the, the sprite art, which is all very lovely and articulated. And like I said, lots of attention to detail. Great use of color palette. And even the atmospheric way the dungeons are laid out with this fog of war uh, definitely gives you a bit of a moody quiet, dark, foreboding sense, which I think is a good thing. Um, oh, okay, I wasn't sure if I could jump down from that. So we actually picked up a potion. Almost looks like juice. I'm not actually sure what most of the potions do. I know I had a, I think it was like a, some sort of a blue potion that actually re uh, regen some health, and then there was a one that I ran into that regen poison. Packs quite a punch. What happens? Oh, I can actually put that on my arrows? Is that, is that where we're going with that? Oh god, I just realized that was a shop down there. Okay, I'm not actually sure how I use those. I guess we'll figure that out in time, and I'm sure uh, the commenter is probably going to mention it as well. Uh, like I said, this is just the very first handful of times that I've even played this, so uh, no worries if I don't get all of the nuance to it just yet. Oh god, that was one of those flytrap things, and I just walked right in front of it. So what does our shopkeep have? And also, well, I only have 30 gold, so we're probably not going to get a whole lot here. Scroll of jump, use the reader with the power... To jump incredibly high once. Alright, so it's sort of like at the beginning of uh, Morrowind, and they shoot you up into the clouds, and then you crash to the ground and die. <laughs> Spider gloves can hang on walls, one size fits all. So there's clearly a bit of a Spelunky influence here, because those are basically just climbing gloves. Um, strong broadsword, normal attack speed greatly increased knockback, a little heavy but quite sharp. So that would be some sort of an improvement over what I have, but I don't actually have enough gold. So I guess we will disregard, unfortunately, as much as I would like to make these purchases... Maybe we'll come back another time. Uh, now, there are supposed to be three levels to this pre-alpha version, and so far in my best run, I was able to just barely finish the first of those three levels. It's a lot harder than you might imagine. So far, I've been having good luck. Uh, the first bunch of runs that I did, every single time I was killed in just probably under a minute, like as soon as I wandered away. I don't know what I'm looking at right there. Is that a dangerous object? Uh, oh, those are spikes! I couldn't actually tell that those were spikes since there was just one of them. I thought it was some sort of a chest or something. All right, so that's really embarrassing. I guess we'll play as the lady this time. Um, that was gonna be an okay run. Oh, look, now we can see the spikes demonstrated properly. Also, she has less health, which uh, I don't know how well that balances out, because honestly, it seems like she has less damaging attacks, shorter range, and less health with the trade-off of a little bit more magic, and I'm gonna guess maybe better maneuverability or something? Doesn't entirely seem so, though. Seems about as equal. Uh, she does attack a lot faster, though, so I guess we'll give her that. And we'll look at her skill tree in just a second. I kind of wish that you had to earn the first affinity point uh, instead of it just always being right in your inventory as soon as you start up. Because it means, well, I guess if you're having a bunch of short runs, that's kind of a different scenario. If you're having better runs, maybe this wouldn't be as big of an issue. But so far, all my runs have been super short. So I've always had the need to immediately restart. So let's look at her skills real quick. We've got acrobatics, rolling, move while ducking to initiate a roll, uh, jump off walls, that sounds pretty handy, and evasion, gain a 20% chance to evade physical attacks, that also sounds quite handy. It's a bit of a defense move, I suppose, since she doesn't actually have a defense tree. Uh, so we've got archery, enable strafing while drawing a bow, so she's clearly the archery-oriented character here. Enable jumping while drawing a bow, uh, vertical targeting, okay, so you can aim up, Piercing arrows to pierce through objects, and pierce through two objects. So she can become quite a force to be reckoned with with that bow. So we've got anatomical studies for dagger. Dagger attacks have a chance to critically strike. Hold up an attack to throw your dagger, and dagger attacks poison the enemy. I kind of want to know what up, uh, what's up with this dagger throwing ability. Is that going to mean I have to go get my dagger, or can I just throw a bunch of them? 
uh, using magic, sort of like an alt fire in uh, Castlevania or something. I really just call it an alt fire, an alt weapon. <laughs> Shadow enters stealth mode by holding down, attacks out of stealth mode, always critically hit. And a shadow clone follows you, mirroring your attacks. That's interesting. So I'm going to go with critical strikes, because that just sounds like the most useful thing, since I have very, very low attack uh, for damage. I was doing like two or three a second ago, so we'll see if this helps out. The idea of getting a crit every now and then could make the difference for our character. Uh, and again, fall damage is a thing, and I don't have the ability to attack down this time, so I've got to be... Oh god, bad positioning. And I'll open that chest in just a second. Uh, you can bounce off enemies' heads, so that does come in handy pretty often. we got a scroll of teleport. Uh, randomly teleport to another location. Alright, well, I'll keep that in mind. And you know the other game this reminds me a lot of? I forget if I said this, uh, this at the beginning, but... Oh god, what have I done? What is that? Oh god, uh, I found a hammer of some kind. I need to get out of here. But uh, Crystal Catacombs definitely comes to mind a bit. A cat hammer, crude hammer... His head fashioned from stone. And I think it's a lot to do with the sprite art. Oh, she starts with a bow. That... I didn't even notice that. I am a dingo. I can't believe I didn't see that. Alright, so that's kind of a big improvement. The fact that she has a long-range attack, whereas your other character doesn't... I can see that making a bit of a difference in your gameplay. Uh, not that I'm making much use of that. And my god, this is a bit daunting right now. I don't have any ability to aim. Die, 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 die. Oh, why do I keep tempting that thing? This music is rather nerve-wracking. Can I just get what's... What is that? Oh, it's a book of teleport. Where did that worm come from? Reminds me a little of the glowworm thing from Adventure Time, that thing that, like, vibrates and hypnotizes everybody. Can I... Oh, God! Oh, I was gonna go find a good position and shoot at him, but... Yeah, he already grabbed me with some poison. Uh, so as you can see... Some pretty climactic moments that you can have in Vagante, and even though this has just been just a tiny little smattering of the gameplay, I've already got very positive impressions of this, and the idea that this is pre-alpha right now uh, really amazes me. Like, I don't know where this is going to go, but it seems like it's all good. I don't know really what you could do to make this not just keep getting better. Uh... Maybe it's balanced a little bit towards uh, more combat than I would have liked for me personally, but that's just me personally. And I guess the same could really have been said of Spelunky at certain points, uh, because there's plenty of enemies in Spelunky. And I also don't understand how you get more points yet, but that's also just a matter of uh, figuring that out, so I can't really blame the game or anything. Uh, black potion, completely opaque. Protects you from death, destroyed after use. That sounds pretty handy. Only it's 44, and I don't have that much. Is it milk? Uh, I think that was a strength potion, or a speed potion, or a venom po I don't remember, actually. I only saw that once, and I'd never seen the black potion before, so that's a first. There's like a good smattering of items in this as well, because each time I play, I'm running into something I haven't seen yet. You know, the other thing, and I feel like I'm just pulling a million references here, and a lot of them are just kind of because, oh, well, you know, roguelike. Uh, I'm also getting a little bit of a feeling of Legend of Dungeon, only like, you know, 2D side-scrolling Legend of Dungeon. Uh, and that's totally a good thing. It's got maybe a similar charm to its art style or something like that. Uh, you know, nice high contrast feeling. Uh, colorful without being too colorful that it sacrifices the moodiness. Uh, but, you know, between all those references I've said, I've, I, those are all games I enjoy, so there's really nothing nothing bad there in terms of art style. And I haven't probably mentioned how good the music is as well. It's a nice pensive rhythm, keeps you engaged, feels dramatic. Doesn't feel overly uh, dramatic, though. I think it feels just the right amount of stirring. Um, so many dangers. I don't even know what to watch out for all the time. Because I don't actually remember what it was. Oh, did I just get the thing that I was just saying I couldn't buy? Is imbued with the soul of a demonic familiar. Minus one to fire resist, plus one to all resistances. Whether you wear it around your head or your neck, it offers more style than protection. Alright, so I can actually choose where I put that on. And that's pretty cool. Let's drink a lot of potions here. Uh, it doesn't look natural. Slightly translucent. Is it milk? So we got... Snake Fang, which looks like probably Poison Resist. Uh, the Bunny, which I'm going to guess makes you faster, and just in case I can, like, highlight those, which I can't. And that last one, I don't actually know what to make of that. It just looks like a golem head or, like, a lion or something. 
Oh, there's a familiar. That's exactly what it said would happen, isn't it? Also, I'm losing health, so that potion, probably not so much a potion. Also, I noticed it had a red border around it, so I just poisoned myself for no reason. That is really cool that there's a familiar helping me out already. Uh, I don't know where I'm going. I'd... I'm looking for a doorway, in case you were wondering, but I don't remember what the doorway looks like. That mini-map is very tiny in the corner there. I wonder if there's a way to make it bigger. Kinda don't think so, because I've pressed all the buttons several times over now. Uh, let's equip this tunic, though. Get a better chance to uh, have some evade damage, or evade some damage, and also attackers will sometimes be frozen. That sounds great. Now, I wonder if they mean, like, paralyzed? Oh, no, they mean, like, icicles frozen. That's awesome. There's even effects for elemental stuff already. This is seriously a really polished pre-alpha, and the fact that it's free, too. Like, I would probably have not had too big of an issue if I would have paid three bucks for this. But I didn't pay any bucks for this, and neither would you have to. Oh, look, it's that thing again. Uh, I wish I had a bow and arrows right now. I do not. Oh, there's the door, so we could actually leave, or we could try to stay and fight this boss. I'm going to choose for uh, the sake of coverage to get out of dodge here, and we'll see if we can uh, find something interesting in the next area before I meet my untimely demise. I'm really happy to have this familiar. This might make a bit of a big difference in my gameplay if I can actually position myself in such a way as to uh, continually be able to use it effectively. So it means I'm going to always have some... Uh, oh, jeez, that almost killed me. Uh, some rather passive damage, which will be handy. I still don't do very much damage. Well, I say still, but it's like I'm on level 2, so I don't know what I'm really asking for here. That's a mimic! I don't want... Oh, jeez, it dropped a lot of gold, though, so I guess that's good. Uh, let's probably fall on these spikes as I make my way over to this treasure chest. If they really wanted to mess me up, just have that uh, little bit of wood plank that that chest is sitting on. Just have that drop away, and I would not have been able to react in time. Uh, I'm running out of health, though, which is going to be a bit of a problem. I would love it if we could maybe regen some of that at some point, so I'm not actually sure, other than potions, how I can even get my health back, and that's a bit of a problem. Oh, jeez. There was nothing under there to catch me if I wasn't careful. Also, you can bait those things out and then hit them with your sword if you want to be extra safe, which I do recommend doing. Oh, look, I actually froze its dead body, I guess, because the collision box is a little weird or something. Another mimic! What are the odds of me- oh, and, and some arrows that came out of nowhere. Alright, well, I'm doing very well in terms of gold. Uh, whether or not that's going to really benefit me has yet to be seen. And I think I can only get away with, like, one downward strike each time, so I've got to be pretty careful about that. Uh, second time, I seem to bounce off the enemy's head, so I guess it's not the end of the world or anything, but... Uh, I could get caught in the wrong spot. Oh, nice arrow. Also, strange arrow. It kind of, like, hovered slowly at that wall. I also noticed there was a really cool little detail that when I shot the bats uh, at one point, it actually left the arrow embedded in the bat for a moment. So that was kind of neat. I was kind of expecting the arrow to be sort of just like, you know, a bullet or something that would just vanish. That scares me each time I see it animating. This jump could actually be a little iffy, just because I'm not entirely sure of what my character's jump distance is yet. Are we going to go for three mimics this time? I guess I should... yeah, alright. I don't know if uh, mimics work like they do in Dark Souls or something, where if I try to slash them, they'll wake up, or if I have to... Oh god, that's awkward. I didn't realize that that stone was actually in the foreground. I thought I could just walk past it. Um, didn't I? Oh yeah, I got a couple of potions here. Let's see what this orange juice does. Uh, it gives me blue fire hand. Well, it's got a green border around it, so that's probably good. I'm guessing magic regen or something like that. Uh, very essence of wind is stoppered in this very in this flask. Okay, potions of speed are nice. Uh, let's kill another one of these traps. Are we actually going to make it through another level here? I don't actually know uh, if we're about to leave or if I'm just making this worse. You're going to fall on the spikes, right? So you can go ahead and do that. Oh, big old chest, but I don't have a key. Darn. You know, the character reminds me a little bit of, like, the Hobbit or something. Which uh, kind of makes sense. I mean, I feel like I'm on some sort of glorious journey here. I don't entirely understand the framing of the story or anything like that, but I don't think it's necessary to at this point in the game. Um, did that actually just hit me? I'm not sure. I saw one, but I think it was actually probably just from my familiar shooting it. 
Oh god, the boss is back again, I think. And there's like a million angry... Yeah, okay, the ogres or whatever those were got me. And whoever that was, too, that's not the worm boss, but it looked pretty pissed. And I think that's where we're going to wrap up Vigante. Uh, definitely, definitely go ahead and download this. There's absolutely nothing stopping you. It's totally free. It is pretty freaking entertaining and surprisingly polished. And it is randomly generated, so every time you play it, there's going to be a little bit more to see. Perhaps you can find some fantastic weaponry and tell me of the tales of your, you know, exploits in this wild world. And hopefully, you know, you won't die as many times as I did because you now have a little bit of experience, which I didn't have going in. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one as much as I did. Let me know in the comments what you think about this one. Uh, if you have any criticisms, you know, positive or negative, let me know that as well. Uh, on the whole, it's like I really have very little negative to say about it. And I mean, granted, I usually don't have much negative to say about, uh, you know, alphas, pre-alphas or, you know, really early on games. But this one, even if I was trying to be as critical as possible, it's like, you know, just give me more. I don't really, I don't have any problems here. Let's just, uh, let's see more. So I will be watching the development of this one like a hawk, I imagine. And I also imagine there will be uh, at least one to five different streams of me playing this because I, I have a feeling I'm going to try and uh, at least best what's available in this uh, alpha version right now. So anyway, with that, I think I will wrap up the episode again. Like I said, I already was going to. But thank you as always for watching. Uh, links are in the description. We've got social media stuff. We've got the game link. We've got my website on and so forth. I'm pretty sure you're all familiar with how this all works. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. It helps me out a whole bunch. And consider subscribing if you do find yourself here on a regular basis. I do greatly appreciate uh, any of you who stick around for the show as basically since each episode goes up every single day. It means a lot for those that come back and help me uh, keep my channel in existence because this is uh, basically my favorite thing to do. Finding these kind of wondrous, magical, crazy, unheard of indie games, you know, keeps me going. So I appreciate that you appreciate it and all of that great you know, happy, warm, huggy feeling. So I will be back again tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic night, everybody.